leader here at New Hope Church. Um, we are thankful that you're joining us this morning. Uh, I'm just thankful to be joined by my wonderful friends who I play in a band with. Over there on guitar, we have Matt, we have Mike, we have Aramis Brown, and we have Willie Hatcher. So uh, we thank you guys for joining us this morning, whether you're on Zoom or YouTube. Um, and uh, let's get started with our service. Uh, do we have some announcements? Children's Ministries today at 1230. And um, we have Zoom devotions this week, Wednesday at, Matt, what time does that say? Eight o'clock, sorry about that. I can't really see around the corner, um, but that's okay. I'm just gonna pray this morning and uh, please just join us uh, in worship, whichever way you feel comfortable with uh, in your own homes. And as we uh, worship this morning, just know that the spirit is with you in your home. and. Uh, God loves to hear his people join in one voice. Amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, we just come before you this morning and we just thank you so much for everything that you give us, everything that you've um, allowed us to have in our lives. And we know, God, that you are with us in every situation, whether we make our bed in the depths of hell or we are with you in heaven or we are on this earth, you are with us. We cannot escape your love. And Lord, we are so thankful that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for our sins and be resurrected three days later. Because with that sacrifice, our sin has been completely washed away. And we are so thankful for everything that you do for us. And Lord God, this morning, as we come before you and worship you, and we have this message presented to us today, that we would just be in your presence, and that we would focus on what you want us to uh, receive from your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for your deep love for us that shows up in your faithfulness. You alone are worthy of our praise, our devotion, and our trust. Lord God, continue to keep us close to you, tethered to your word. We come to your throne of grace, believing and trusting your word that says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
We ask that you comfort Sherry and Ashley during their time of mourning for Chris. Comfort Donna during her time of mourning, her and her family, Lord God, and for Cheyenne, who is mourning the death of her grandmother, who she is very close with. Bless her with your comfort, Lord God. We continue to pray for Rubina, lifting her up to you, Lord God, as she battles this illness. Touch her and heal her, Lord God. Give her strength and courage to overcome the effects of the treatments. Give the family continued strength to persevere through this. We pray for Pastor Dan's parents for strength, healing, and wisdom moving forward. We pray, Lord God, that you lead in all decisions needed to be made around their care. We pray for Pastor Dan's dad having recent hip surgery to do well through the recuperation process while in rehab. Heal him, Lord God, be with him. We pray and ask for healing for those suffering with COVID at this time. Lord God, give the doctors wisdom to make good decisions for their care. We pray for loved ones that are taking care of family members with COVID and for anyone with symptoms that they may get the proper care to help them through. We pray for your protection over our church families as they go through their daily activities. Protect them and keep them safe. We also pray, Lord God, for the vaccine distribution that the people in charge will figure out the right way to make the vaccine available to more people. We pray that the vaccine will work and make it possible for us to be together again. We thank you, Lord God, for Robbie and the worship team as they encourage us in our worship, bringing us together with one voice. We ask, Lord God, that you help us to hear you as we listen to your word from your servant, John Amendola. We love you and bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. From the book of Ephesians 4, verse 1. Therefore, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's fault, faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascends higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ, the word of God. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John. And uh, this morning we're going to talk about leadership, what the scriptures have to say about leadership. Uh, and so uh, in order to do that first, uh, I'd like for us to uh, turn to my favorite theologian. And uh, I think we're going to get that PowerPoint up in a minute here. Uh, so um, our There we go. All right. So my favorite theologian, uh, I know Pastor Dan's is uh, probably Tom Wright. Is that true? Or who would you say? My favorite theologian would be Rocky Balboa. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and, and put up a quote by Rocky there. Uh, so here's here's Rocky. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Rocky one. And uh, Rocky, uh, and that's a uh, Pauly on the left there. Polly is works in a meatpacking plant, as you can see, and Rocky would work out uh, in the meatpacking plant. And uh, Rocky began uh, to have an affection for Polly's sister, and Polly and his sister had some animosity towards each other. So uh, let's let's get up the the conversation here between the two. And Paul asked, "Do you like her?" And Rocky said, uh, "I'll do my best Rocky voice here." Uh, sure, I I like her. And then Polly says. And let's go ahead and get all, all, all the conversation up there. So uh, what's the attraction? And he says, oh, I don't know. She uh, fills gaps. And Polly says, what's gaps? And Rocky says, uh, I don't know. She's got gaps. I got gaps. And uh, together we fill gaps. Right. And this is, this is a, actually a profound theological truth. Uh, being made in the image of God, um, uh, in, in the scriptures it says that, uh, we have we have gaps and we fill each other's gaps. I have weaknesses uh, that are complemented by other people's strengths, and uh, others have uh, I have some strengths that complement other people's weaknesses. And it's that diversity that makes us one. As we come together and fill gaps, uh, we become more than we were before. And Rocky understood that he would become more than he is uh, by by having a relationship with someone who has strengths that he doesn't have, right? And that's really what our job is as leaders in the church. Our job as leaders of the church is to facilitate gap filling, right? We have diverse gifts in the group, in, in our church. We have diverse gifts as leaders. And as we talk about leadership, what we're going to find is that our responsibility as leaders is not to get people to follow us and to do our will, but our job description as leaders is to recognize uh, the strengths and weaknesses, the gaps that we each have, and facilitate us filling each other's gaps so that we uh, become one in Christ, one in purpose. Yes, diverse, because that diversity is important. Um, without the diversity, we wouldn't have gaps to fill, right? We would just be this. And so uh, we have our gaps, we, we have our strengths and our weaknesses, and the leader's responsibility is to recognize those things in God's people and create an environment where we come together in love and unity and fill one another's gaps so we can fulfill our uh, purpose as, as uh, a church. And so our main idea this morning, which we're going to see, is that leaders are called to mobilize diverse people into one mission, right? That's our job description. We talk about leadership. This morning, we talk about what does it mean to be a leader in God's church. This is what it means that we we're taking diverse people and we're mobilizing, equipping, strengthening them so that we can together uh, be one and fulfill one common mission. And so to do that, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter four. Uh, we're going to see two things. First, we're going to see uh, the call of unity uh, and then we're going to see the uh, principle of diversity in that. So uh, let's go ahead and, and if you have a Bible or we put it up here as well, let's look at Ephesians chapter four and we're going to look at we're going to look at uh, what does it mean to uh, to have unity and uh, let's uh, as we work through this passage, let's just keep the passage up for a little while uh, as we work through it. So let me read it one more time and when I read it, please listen for the call to oneness. And when Paul says oneness, he's not saying sameness. He's recognizing that we have diversity, but in that diversity, we become one. So let's let's look at that. As, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life 
worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So we're just going to quickly uh, look through this, but, but let's let's take this. He, he, he uses the word then, or as the passage we read, the version we read earlier, it says, therefore, whenever you see this word, therefore, it's referring to what was bef- what was previous. And what was previous to this was a benediction where it says to who him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine to God be glory in the church and in Jesus. So the call here is God being glorified in the church, right? That he is able to do more than we can ever ask or imagine. And as a result, he's going to be glorified uh, in his church through us. So in order to see God's glory in the church, he said, therefore, because we want to see God's glory, I am going to urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received. The word calling means invitation. And I love that because that's what the Christian life is. The Christian life is is an invitation to follow Jesus. Uh, Many times we characterize our faith as asking or inviting Jesus into our lives, inviting him to his heart, our our hearts. I'm not disparaging that at all. What I'm saying is that really, that's really not as prevalent in scripture as the reverse is true, which is Jesus' invitation for us to come into his life, right? Jesus' invitation for us to follow him. And what is Jesus doing? His mission is to reconcile all things, all things through him. And so as he begins to work to uh, reverse the damage of sin uh, in uh, the earth and in in peoples, uh, he's inviting us along uh, in that work in that calling in that mission to reconcile all things through christ and so we're invited into that calling and that's what it means to follow jesus Uh, not so much which i have no problem with inviting jesus to our heart I, i appreciate that sentiment but really the christian life is accepting his invitation to come into his life right and that's what we're doing and so he's at work reconciling all things through jesus He's living, asking us to live worthy of that invitation. And so what does that mean to be worthy of the invitation to to participate in his work to reconcile all things to Jesus? And what it is, is oneness in the body. Even though we're diverse, even though we're different, the way that we live worthy of that calling is to be one. The way that we live worthy of following Jesus is to love one another and to live as one, to live in unity, even though we're different. So we, and in order to do that, of course, we're going to have to be verse two, completely humble and gentle. Look at that, completely humble and gentle. The word humble actually literally means low diaphragm because in their thinking, the diaphragm uh, was the seat of consciousness. So we can translate that uh, humble-minded, low-minded. Uh, basically, what we're saying is we're not seeing ourselves as superior or better than others, but we're we're bringing ourselves under because we're we're servant-hearted and being gentle uh, with each other. And uh, then we're being patient, which is long-suffering. We're suffering alongside people, and we're bearing with one another. And so we see these words: humble, gentle, patient, bearing. Right. The idea is that. Uh, there's an assumption that there's a difficulty, right? Because we're all different and there's a difficulty. And and because we're different, we can uh, actually have conflict with one another, right? And even if you think of the marriage gap filling, right? Uh, My wife and I are very different and sometimes our differences can try each other's patience, right? Can try each other's uh, patience in that, you know, we, we see things differently and we get frustrated. And so that's assumed. When we're different, we're going to try each other's patience. And, and Paul is not rejecting that idea at all. He's saying in that, though, we need to long suffer with each other. We need to, to be humble and low minded and assume that, hey, I could be wrong. Hey, I could I could I need to put myself under this person and serve them. 
And so we're making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit. Now, this word unity does not mean sameness. It's not saying we should all believe the same thing. We should all think the same way. He's not saying that because he recognizes diversity is important. He's saying this word unity literally means the word one. It's oneness. It's, and he's saying even though we're, we're, we're diverse, which is good, we need to be one. One in spirit through the bond of peace. And, and so what he's saying is we have a commonality uh, that we need to cling to. And this commonality is in our identity as followers of Jesus. Now, the conflict in this context was actually racial. So the book of Ephesians was written to the church in Ephesus, which is uh, kind of like South uh, Western Turkey area, that kind of area now. And what happened was uh, the Jewish Palestinian believers in Jesus had to disperse because of, uh, of persecution. And so they wound up all throughout the Mediterranean coast. And living in the Mediterranean coast were, were Gentile pagan idol worshipers. And through the witness of the Palestinian Jewish believers in Jesus, these idol worshipers became believers. And so the churches began to form with Jewish believers who had their traditions and their ideas and their ways of doing things. And then we had these uh, pagan idol worshipers who came to Jesus without any of that religious background. And they came together in one church, right? And Paul is saying, okay, uh, he spends the first three chapters of Ephesians helping them to understand their oneness, even though they're very different, right? And he's not telling them they should be the same. In fact, quite the contrary, Paul all over and over calls them to, to, to be who they are and worship the way that, that they worship, but that they need to come together as one. And, and, and they had so many differences of seeing things. Uh, some of the uh, more traditional Jewish believers thought we should follow these rituals and then the Greek believers said, no, we're free to, to not do those things. And they really got angry at each other. And Paul didn't say, okay, why don't you start your church and you start your church? No, he's saying, stay together, be unified, right? Bear with one another, be humble, assume that you can, uh, you, you, you know, and believe the best one another. Because listen, even in all these racial differences, even in all these differences of culture and tradition, you have one hope which means that we're all going to be resurrected someday uh, when Christ comes back and enter into his kingdom. We have one Lord, Jesus Christ. We have one faith, the gospel, right? One baptism, our identification with Jesus. One God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. And so he's saying, even though you have all this diversity, we, we come together in oneness uh, as, as, as followers of Jesus, and we, we fill each other's gaps, right? And we participate together in the redemption of all things uh, through Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> now, I love this uh, these three prepositions, which we'll look at really quick. Um, who's overall, through all, and in whole. These are three Greek prepositions, and uh, really what they mean, the first one overall talks about the, the dominion that God has over all the earth, right? And uh, that he is over all things, he, he's ruler, he is sovereign. And the word through all is a preposition that means by means of, which means he's the agent of all things. And so this is speaking of his power to accomplish all things. And in all means his indwelling presence. Now, in the scriptures, uh, when, when we talk about the indwelling presence of, of God, Many times we think of that as Americans very individually, that I asked Jesus into my heart. I'm not saying that God can't indwell us as individuals, but in scripture, when the indwelling of God is mentioned, it's always in the plural. It's always as a community. He indwells us as community. In fact, 1 Corinthians 3.16, you, plural, you all are a temple, singular, of God, and the spirit of God lives in all of you, you all, plural. And so we singular as a oneness of God's people are the dwelling place of God. So he is in us. And as he dwells in us as a church, he makes us one through his power. 
and we live under the common rule and reign of the sovereign God. So that's our oneness, right? We, we live as one, even though we're diverse, we, we, we have a oneness of purpose, a oneness of baptism, a oneness of faith, a oneness of calling, right? And, and in that oneness, uh, it comes from not sameness, but it comes from diversity filling each other's gaps. It comes from diversity living in love with one another. And that's what he's going to say. He's going to say, yes, we're oneness, but that doesn't mean that we're the same. We're different. And the difference is what, what makes this oneness powerful. So let's look at uh, diversity. Let's look at verse 7 real quick. I love verse 7. It is so powerful. It's so descriptive. Here's what he says in verse 7 and 8. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ has apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. This is a quote of Psalm 68. The funny thing is, it really doesn't say that. It says in Psalm 68, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and received gifts from his people. So Paul is actually turning this verse around to make a point. So, uh, Dan, I think our seminary professors probably would have given uh, uh, Paul a, a, a poor mark in, in Bible interpretation, right? Uh, <laughs> but Paul is making a point here by turning this around. Uh, what he's saying is this. This ascending on high, ascending to the mountain, bringing captives and receiving gifts in the Old Testament is the picture of a returning, conquering king, a returning king who's coming, ascending to his throne, and the people are showering him with gifts and showering him with praise uh, as he comes in with his spoil and with the captives that he conquered, right? And so Paul takes this image of this conquering king and turns it around and says, Christ rose from the, th rose from the grave. He ascends to his throne, but instead of receiving gifts, he's giving gifts. And he's turning this around uh, to make this really wonderful point that, yes, he's risen from the grave. He's sitting on the throne. But unlike those, the king in the Old Testament, he is actually, instead of receiving gifts from us, he's giving gifts to us. Right. So that the result of Christ ascending to his throne and conquering death, conquering sin, is that he showers us with gifts of the spirit. And that's just a wonderful picture. And we all get different gifts, uh, which is both wonderful and sometimes a bit annoying, right? Because our, our, our gifts, uh, although we think they're great, sometimes uh, clash with other people's gifts. So let's, let's uh, look at these gifts. Uh, let's look at verse 11 and see these diverse gifts that he gives us. Now, the first thing I'll say is uh, Pastor Dan and I had a discussion about this, and, and we see this passage uh, in the same way. Uh, as um, as not Christ instituting offices of the church, although the offices certainly can and did exist, but this is more speaking of, of leadership gifts, gifts of the Spirit given to God's people to empower us to accomplish our mission as one people. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ might be built up until we all reach the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And so Christ gave, uh, so again, we see this as spiritual giftedness, uh, gifted people, people with spiritual gifts. I don't know if either one of us, Dan or I, see this as an exhaustive gift, an exhaustive list. I think uh, there are other gifts. This is probably a, a good summary of many gifts, but we see other gifts in the scriptures. Um, so, but here, here's a good list of gifts. And let's go through these quickly and see what these words mean. Now, the word apostle literally means one who is sent, one who is sent. This is the person who is the advancer of the mission, the pioneer. This is the person who is about 
moving the church forward uh, and advancing us in our mission, right? The pioneers, the missionaries, the church planters, the people who think entrepreneurially and say, okay, this is great, but we got to keep moving forward. So we all know those people in our lives, right? The second one is prophets. Prophets doesn't mean someone who tells the future. It literally means spokesperson spokesperson. The per the prophet is the one who is recognizing God's will in our midst and is calling us to obedience to God's will, to obedience to God's mission. He's the one who's always evaluating what's happening around us and saying, wait a second, guys, we're off track here. We need to, if, we need to uh, get back to God's heart, get back to God's mission. Now, I happen to be uh, my giftedness happens to fill in, in this category, right? Where, where, uh, and if you, uh, Follow me on Twitter, you know this, right? <laughs> that I'm always calling out who we need to, um, or what, how we need to get back on track, right? Then the third word is evangelists, literally good news tellers. These are the people who think about telling people more, gathering people. We need to tell more people about Jesus. We need to gather uh, the lost and bring them into the, uh, the church. And, and these are the people always wanting to, to uh, tell people about Jesus. Pastors, the word literally is shepherd. And English is one of the only languages that has a different word for pastor and shepherd, someone who keeps uh, care of sheep. In fact, like in, those of you who speak Spanish know that in Spanish, pastor is the same word for pastor and for shepherd. It's the same word because that's exactly what we do. We, we nurture, we protect, we care for God's people. Uh, pastors are concerned with the health. Of God's church. And last is the teachers. Teacher literally means instructor, uh, the people who are training and equipping us, the people giving us the knowledge that we need to know. So the apostle is concerned about going further, right? The prophet is concerned about being better. Uh, the evangelist is concerned about being larger. The, the, past, the pastor is concerned about being healthier. And the teacher is concerned about being wiser. And as we bring all these things together, we, we, we complement one another and we uh, fulfill our mission. Now, these different gifts can clash with each other. Now, as a prophet, I'm so concerned about doing things the right way that sometimes I get impatient with, let's say, apostles. Because apostles always want to move forward. We got to plant more churches. I'm like, wait a second. Can't we do this one right first before we make another one? Right. And the apostles like, oh, you're just slowing me down. Right. And, and every, you could take any two giftednesses and, and see how they clash with one another. Right. Uh, the, the pastor is always concerned about the health of God's people uh, where, you know, the evangelist says, well, just worry about that later. Let's just get more people in where the shepherd might say, wait a second, we need to really take care of the people we have before we, we grow any bigger, right? And so we, we, we clash with, them, with one another, but this tension is healthy. This tension is good because I've recognized that I need the apostle in my life to continue to push me forward and to trust God. You know, to, I, if, if you left it up to me, I'd be continually making sure all our ducks in a row and everything's right and we would never be moving in any direction, right? Uh, and so we, we complement one another uh, in these different gifts, right? And so that's all these different giftednesses. Now, how do you know what gift you have? Very easy. What do you complain about? That's how you know what your gift is. If you complain about, you know what? We really need to take care, better care of God's people. You're probably a pastor. If you complain that we're never moving in any direction, we got no vision, then you're probably an apostle. So just ask someone what you complain about. That's pretty pretty good indication of what your gift is. All right, so let's move forward really quick and see what the purpose of this diversity is. Verse 12, to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ might be built up. The word equip, we've heard that before. That's that word that means if a bone is broken, we set it in place, right? And so what, what, a, what, what the purpose of these gifts are is to take God's people who are broken and diverse and in conflict and set them in place and to cause healing, to cause that bone to knit together so that we become one in our diversity, right? And so that the body of Christ might be built up. This is actually a construction term, means laying one brick upon another. So the result is structural integrity, right? That when we're all living in our diversity as one, we all contribute our gifts to fill gaps 
we are actually building up the body of Christ and creating a structural integrity uh, that makes the church stand up against all kinds of uh, persecutions and difficulties and hardships. Because as we live together in our diversity, we become mature, right? We become mature. So here's your job description. If, you're, if you are a leader in a church, your job description is to use your gift to recognize the gifts in others so that we can mobilize one another to live uh, together as one, to contribute our gifts to the whole, to accomplish our mission. And the leader's job is not to get people to follow me, not to get people to serve my gift, but to use my gift to cause each other to, to become one, to cause each other to use our giftedness to contribute to mission. And so we're recognizing this person's giftedness and recognizing this person's giftedness and mobilizing them to advance the mission of the church, mobilizing them to uh, contribute to gap filling so that we become a structurally sound building. And so if you're called to be a leader, uh, we're called to serve. We're called to recognize our own gift, recognize the gifts in others, and lovingly equip each other to use those gifts to build up the body of Christ. And that's what I call, it's a, it's a role of a servant not as an authoritarian. We, we serve from beneath to equip people to use their giftedness. And so with that, Dan is gonna take it from here and, and we're gonna have some great opportunities to see that actually happen at New Hope. And so uh, as, as we, we, we uh, move forward, just uh, hold on to our job descriptions as God's people so recognize our giftedness so that we can serve the church uh, to be, uh, one in our diversity. Amen. That's exactly it, uh, John. It says, you know, our responsibility as leaders in the church, our responsibility is to equip God's people to do the work. And so I love the fact that God has brought together to, to new hope, such a diverse group of people and uh, people from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of, uh, 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 experiences. I'm thankful for the way God has folded people in. Uh, in some cases, He's introduced them to the gospel, and they've come to come to understand what the gospel is about. In other cases, uh, it's connecting them to a body of believers where they were not really connected before uh, to be actually part of uh, part of the church, uh, part of the family of God, and so. Uh, some people have found this to be a place where they can really flourish. And uh, I love to hear stories like that because that's definitely my heart. I am the shepherd, right? I'm the pastor. I'm the shepherd. That's, uh, my dad will say that uh, I'm a shepherd with a, with a teaching motivation. And uh, I will tend to try to fix things by teaching. <laughs> You'll find that about me. But um but that's what we want to be about is, is a place where people can flourish and where they can, uh, they can use their gifts. They can have a role. They can have a play, a, a, a role to play, a, a, a part to play. And um, I mean, our whole, uh, our, our whole mission as a church is to live out the gospel, right? It's to see lives transformed in the way we live out the gospel and, uh, you know, following Jesus, being in Christ uh, and, and, uh, and just living that out. So, you know, with grace, uh, uh, grounded in scripture, uh, being real, uh, you know, really seeking to follow Christ and, and to listen to the spirit. So as we grow up as a church and, and, and I, John, I appreciate you, uh, speaking this morning on this text, I want to talk a little bit about the development of the structure of leadership. Uh, that passage is about leadership. And so we, have, we are beginning as we uh, you know, go along, as we grow up as a church, it's healthy that we develop a structure for leadership. And so when we first began, it was, it was like me, you know, you get a pastor and, you know, you got, you got uh, an advisory team of people, people who came around me who were willing to, to give, uh, to, to, willing to serve, willing to give of their time and their talents. And, uh, and so we had this 
pastor's advisory team is what we called it. Okay. And so, uh, and after a while we, um, uh, you know, they invested for those first years as we got going and as we uh, uh, got the church to, uh, you know, kind of off the ground uh, as we, as we planted. And, and um, um, so after a while, what we did is we phased out the pastor's advisory team and we developed plans for elders and deacons. And so uh, we are still kind of in that development process in part. We have we have uh, deacons, we form the deacons first, and uh, uh, deacons, the, the, name, the word deacon I mentioned before uh, a week or two ago, is that the, the word literally means servant. The, the word literally means servant. And so uh, they are, in, in scripture, they are servants, but they're servant leaders, okay? And their role is to care for the needs of the church, the Bible mentions them in addition to elders and so the uh, the governing the governing of the church you know the doctrinal directional issues those sorts of things those are kind of elder functions but deacons give spiritual leadership they give they they assist the different ministries within the church and so the our deacons uh, work with me as the pastor and as, as, as they work they, they they will work with the elders and and, uh, and and I tell you once once COVID came it, it sort of you know we all we worked out a care group list uh, to try to make it so that you know people would in the church wouldn't fall through the cracks we connect with people and uh, and the deacons have been have been helpful in checking in and have been uh, connecting with people. And it's not foolproof, but it's, uh, but it's helped a lot. And I'm thankful for their work. I'm thankful for uh, the concern that they have, the, the way they pray for people. And uh, uh, they've helped with some of the challenges of reopening and then going back virtual. And now we're going to need to reopen again, hopefully sometime soon. Uh, they've helped us as we've dealt with the, the, the shortage of volunteers, um, and, uh, uh, working out, you know, uh, protocols and all that. And so they, uh, they develop the budget, they develop the, uh, they have, they kind of keep an eye on the, on the financial stability of the church. Uh, are we going to be able to pay our bills, that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and they will do that, uh, in collaboration with, with the elders. And so. At different points, uh, talk about filling gaps, John. At different points, I've seen deacons come along and just uh, they, they they come right along and do what needs to be done, and uh, and that is uh, that's a blessing to me. That it, and and yet it's not the Dan show. It's not. It, this is not about. This is this church. <laughs> Jesus and I talk about this a lot. This is his church, <laughs> and so. Uh, you know, I want to provide faithful leadership, and then I've got other people that I want to empower to uh, to come along and, and to do those things as well. So we established deacons a few years ago. We've seen some people transition in and out. I think there was a slide of some of the names. Our current deacons are are Mary, Ann, uh, Joe Hall, Papa Doug, uh, and most recently we added Maida Cruz Vasquez. And uh, you know, she Maida. Thanks for reading today. Uh, Mida has been involved in children's ministries. Uh, uh, she and, and Julio have been uh, involved really, really since like the second week they uh, they were at New Hope. They came a few years ago, and uh, you know you'll see Julio uh, uh, playing uh, in, playing with the band. Not today, but often. And um, you know they're involved in our devotional time, and they they are involved, and and they are people who say how much they appreciate getting plugged into New Hope. And so they've been, uh, and I appreciate the way they serve. And now I'm thankful that Maida is willing to uh, be more involved as, as a deacon. So the next step in, in developing healthy biblical leadership uh, and, and a structure for healthy biblical leadership is to uh, form this group of elders. And so I've been leading that uh, kind of along with Phil for some time, and really we want to do is 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 codify that uh, soon. Uh, essentially, elders provide leadership to the to, to New Hope Church, and so the idea is that they are mature believers who 
who show evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in their lives that, that, that uh, meet the, you see, the elder qualifications. And I'm not going to teach through all that necessarily. I've done that before. But uh, th those, these are some of the qualifications of what, what, how Scripture describes what elders are like on the inside. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, we, what we want to do is, is, is identify for you the plan for who is, you know, for those that are willing to be elders. I've been, I, I haven't talked about this for, for a while, but uh, for a long time, we've, we've recognized that uh, Phil Alba is a key leader at New Hope Church. And that, uh, you know, that's obvious in terms of his gifting, his motivation, his willingness to serve. And, um, you know, I, I love and appreciate him. And um, uh, I've, I've kind of called him a proto-elder, okay? And so, and, and yet, I think it's important that we formalize this uh, rather than to just leave it informal. I think it'll be a, a, a step in the development of the maturity of our church uh, as a whole. Now, as part of the structure of, of elders, we want to have three or more serving together. And so over the past year, <clears throat> I've been working with Sarun. I've been talking with Sarun. I've been inviting him to think and pray and, and uh, uh, consider taking that step. And obviously right now, uh, the Thomas family have their hands full. He and, and Rabina in, in battling this, this cancer. Uh, they've got a lot to, uh, uh, to deal with, but I, but I want you, I want to ask you as the congregation to pray for Phil and to pray for Saroon in terms of, uh, ultimately stepping into this role. And, uh, ultimately what we want to do is we want to affirm them. We want to, we want, you know, hopefully we can meet together soon in person, and, uh, and affirm them and pray for them and actually lay hands on them to sort of ordain them to serve this way in the, in the local body. So as it stands, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the teaching elder, okay? I'm a shepherd, I'm the teaching elder, that's sort of my task. Uh, I, I'm the only elder of New Hope in an official way and that's not ultimately healthy uh, long-term, okay? That is, that's, there are a lot of churches where the, the pastor runs everything and the pastor, you know, and, and we don't want to, we want to create uh, about as healthy a, a, a context as we can for the body of Christ. And we don't want to, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in, in sharing this leadership. And so we want to affirm, we want to recognize Phil Alba and Sarun Thomas and uh, I'm not even entirely sure Phil was uh, going to be in the airport today. He had a change in plans and was getting on a plane. So I don't even know if he's part of this meeting. So, uh, um, but we wanted to talk about this, you know, with the church. And so, and I can attest that uh, these guys uh, fit the qualifications of First Timothy and uh, of Titus 1. And, uh, and they have my support as, as teaching elder, Okay. And so later we want to, uh, the, for the congregation will affirm them, but uh, uh, then we can ordain them as part of the shepherding team. That's kind of uh, how I like to, to frame it. Um, so let me ask you to pray for the leadership of the church, for uh, Phil and for Saroon, and as we work toward this in the future, for the deacons as, you know, in terms of their present roles, um, and, uh, and I'm happy to talk, you know, as we begin to unfold some of this, I'm happy to talk if you have questions about leadership, if you have questions about gifting, if you have questions about uh, uh, anything related to New Hope, I'm, I'm always happy to talk. Uh, the leaders are happy to talk, you know. So uh, and now, John, uh, again, I appreciate you uh, preaching and, and you may be wondering how John uh, Amandala fits and and uh, you notice I've asked him to preach at different points, and I appreciate uh, appreciate your uh, your willingness to do that. And I'm thank I'm thankful for uh, for both you and Karen, John, and uh, that the way God brought you to New Hope when He did, and uh, you know John's planted churches. Uh, you have a little bit more of that prophetic gift, but you've done some apostolic things, right? And so um, 
Uh, but you know, we he and I talked back in 2011 before, way before uh, New Hope was even you know planted, um, and so he was coaching me a little bit about uh, you know starting a church and and as it turns out, and he's mentioned this, they've come to New Hope just before the pandemic hit and, and, uh, they began to settle in and, and that was, that was a blessing. So, uh, right now, John is, is working in, uh, you know, full-time managing a construction project on the, on the North shore. And that's great. Uh, he and, and Karen are developing no Harbor. Um, that's a new project for, uh, uh, to, to connect people, with the church and, and with Jesus that, that really are very, very disconnected. And so, and so that's great. Uh, and of course, as, as COVID unfolded the way it did, it upended a lot of my plans, uh, our plans as a church, you know, 2020, what happened, you know, it, it all kind of was weird and, and, um, and it kind of created this all hands on deck sort of deal. Um, and I've been appreciative of John's willingness, you know, first of all, his leadership gifting, but also his willingness to serve where needed. And, uh, and, you know, he's been willing to preach. Uh, I've been, I'm interested in having him do that regularly uh, because that creates space for me to provide leadership in other areas that I don't always have ability to, to think about or ability to, to invest in. And, um, um, and so he's also doing some leadership training with uh, new hopes now and future leaders and, and, uh, uh, so, you know, Karen Munzenberger, uh, I think I saw a slide there with, with her name on there. Karen has been coordinating children's ministries uh, for the past several years. I have Robbie, you know, providing leadership for worship and uh, appreciate you, Robbie. And, uh, and I've asked John to assist me on staff essentially to help mobilize us, okay, to make sure, you know, I, I don't know that he's is interested in, in serving as an elder, but he's willing to assist me and serve new hope in ways that make sure that we're moving in the right direction to make sure we're moving forward. And so, um, so listen, I, I introduce, uh, uh, Maida as a deacon. I've talked about John I, and then I talk about Phil, Phil and, and, um, uh, Saroon. It's hard to hang out. It's hard to spend time with people from church. We don't even have normal time after the service, right? I guess if you hang out at zoom in zoom you can you can have a little conversation or whatever but um but i want to encourage you to get to know the leaders and people involved in uh in uh, serving the church uh there's going to be opportunities moving forward and we'll try to create some of those uh but they're th these people are part of our church family and they're willing to invest themselves in leadership uh where we're needed and so i uh, appreciate that for, uh, uh, you know, with, with regard to all of you. Um, and so let's take a minute and let's thank God for our present leaders and let's ask the Lord to help us as we continue to grow as a church, as we, uh, as we grow our leadership structure. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for this church. We thank you for New Hope. We thank you for uh, our church family, how you have made this a, uh, a group that's, that loves each other. And Lord, we love you. And we, uh, and we thank you that we are the sort of group that loves each other. And I pray that you would, um, you know, you, you set out to make New Hope a special place. And it's not a perfect place, but it's, it's, it's a special place for people to grow closer to you. And, uh, you know, to, to learn, to, to grow, to follow you, to serve, uh, and to be related to each other. And Lord, I thank you for uh, the fact that that's happening. And Lord, we, we thank you for each one here. I thank you for each one who's part of our church for the diversity among us in terms of background, in terms of our different stories. Thank you for bringing us together. And, um, and um, Lord, as I said before, you, this is your church and we wanna follow your lead. You're the chief shepherd. And uh, we want to be sensitive to your spirit, and uh, we want to operate within our gifts, and we want to we want to honor you. Uh, we want you to be honored by what we do, and that you direct us where to go. Um, we very much want people in our community to experience the hope that you've shown us, to experience the transforming power of the gospel, 
And, and we ask that you would bring more people here, that you would plug them in, that you would help us to be a place uh, where, where people can flourish in knowing you, that where they can uh, uh, explore using their gifts and explore how you design them to fit into the body. And so we ask that you would grow us deeper, grow us deeper in our love for you, in our understanding of who you are, for your plans for us. Uh, uh, we ask that uh, you grow us by adding people and that, that, uh, that people would embrace the gospel and that they would together with us proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. So Lord, we thank you for what you've done over these years of ministry. It's been nine years, Lord. We praise you. Uh, we, we, people have come in and they've experienced something special. And, and that's your doing, Lord. We thank you for our leaders, for our deacons. We thank you for Mary and Anne and, and Joe and Papa Doug and, and uh, bringing Maida into that as well. Bless them, Lord. Use them. Strengthen them and help them to develop a vision in keeping with, uh, with your plans for the church. Um, help Maida as she gets acclimated to this role and, uh, and help her uh, on this leadership team. For John, I pray that you would uh, help him in the work he's doing Monday through Friday for the vision you've given him and reaching out for people who are totally disconnected from you. Um, and, and also for how you've gifted him, Lord, for how you've wired him in serving the local church. Thanks for bringing uh, John and Karen here. We ask your blessing in the way they serve. For, uh, for Karen, for Robbie, for uh, their investment, their continual uh, uh, serving week after week, Lord. Uh, Lord, we ask for the development of our of the, the shepherding team, uh, specifically our desire to, to install Phil and, and Sarun uh, as elders. We ask that you'd be with them, work in their lives, um, the struggles they're facing, Lord, that's it, the, the, the call you, you have for them and their families, Lord, I pray that they would trust you, that they would follow you through all this. Uh, uh, I pray that, that they would really see you at work. That uh, Father, touch Rabina, uh, strengthen her, heal her, restore her, Lord. Uh, be with her through this treatment, fortify her body uh, and her soul. That, that, uh, that as she builds up, having just gone through this treatment, that she would know you, you are there. Encourage her heart, be with her family, uh, show her uh, your goodness and your grace. Uh, Lord, thank you for Phil and for the help he's been uh, in, in planting this church over these years. Uh, I pray that you build him up and bless him and all the things he's going through. Bless his family. Use him for your glory. Um, I, know, I know that's his desire, Lord, is that you use him. And uh, um, Lord, I, I love the fact that you use people like us. You use people uh, uh, in the working out of what you want to do. And, and uh, uh, you could just snap your fingers uh, and, and you could just say a word and it'd be done, but, but you, you don't. You actually use, use people like, like us, uh, people who are fragile, people who are flawed, people who are gifted, uh, but, uh, and, and somehow through love and, and relationship and it, extending grace in the midst of it all, Lord, uh, it brings you glory. And that's our, that's our desire. That's our heart. So we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. So uh, let me invite you uh, to join us around the table because we do want to uh, celebrate uh, the table. Uh, this is the Lord's table and, uh, and, and there's room for you. Okay. And uh, so the invitation is to commune with him, to relate to each other, uh, because Jesus laid down his life for you, you know, his body broken, his blood poured out. Um, all that's to bring us back to God. All that is to fold us into a relationship with each other as part of his body, as part of his family. And so here we proclaim that uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord, and um, and that He's our Lord. So we are in Him. Uh, those are distinctions, you know. John was mentioning, you know, it's 
It's uh, yes, we we invite the Lord to uh, into our hearts and to change us and and everything. But we want to be in Him and to relate um, to each other through Him. So uh, let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for loving us enough to send Jesus and for loving and for his loving us enough to lay down his life. We pray that you would uh, uh, bring us to you, bring us, help us to take in all that you've done for us, Lord. Uh, give us faith to believe, uh, to give us the areas where we struggle. Um, give, help us to give you the areas where we doubt and where we fall. And we ask that you'd keep us close to you. We ask that you would renew us, that you'd renew our, our passion for knowing you and for following you. In Jesus' name, amen. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after he uh, prayed, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Take and eat, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's continue to worship by giving. Uh, God asks us to honor him with our money and it's pretty it's pretty concrete ask right and um i'm i'm actually uh, reading through numbers and there's all sorts about you know very concrete ways that the people gave and and uh you know this is an opportunity to give back uh what what he's provided uh to us and so we have three different ways you can participate if you want to give online you can go to newhopechurchli.com and click give you can uh, take your phone and just text "Give New Hope" to seven seven nine seven seven, or you can mail a check or arrange your bank to mail a check. But uh, I'm going to ask Karen uh, Munzenberger to pray. <laughs> and uh, we had a little confusion last week. Thank you, Elise, for rolling with the flow, and thank you, uh, Karen, for your patience. Thanks, Dan. Oh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for all of the wonderful ways that you've gifted us um, and all of the people in our church that have many wonderful gifts. And I just pray, Lord, that at this time we would use our monetary gifts to further your kingdom. Um, draw in each one of us, Lord, to think about how we can uh, give back what you've given to us, uh, a portion of of the blessing that you have given to us financially that we can give to the church to further your kingdom, to bring more and more people into your presence. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for the ability to give. We pray that in our heart would be joyful as we give, uh, knowing that you will do amazing things uh, with our offering. And we thank you, Lord, for this church and for the way that it cares for people. And we pray that you would use our gifts to do just that, drawing people closer to your son, Jesus. In his name we pray, amen.
actually do the benediction from uh, Ephesians 3, which is right before that passage that uh, we spoke on. Uh, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and love everyone. having a band huh absolutely that new camera angle good stuff and thank you guys you sound thank great you. thank you thank you band that was awesome god bless you you're thank welcome you. <laughs> thank you yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, everybody um Karen's cooking something downstairs that smells really good, so I'm going to go check it out. <laughs> Enjoy. Have a great, a great evening, everyone. Hi, Sarun. Blessings to you. How are you doing, Sarun? Regina. Oh, yeah. Thank you.